What's up, everybody? If you want to join the greatest online Star Wars community, the Fandom Menace, make sure you hit that subscribe button before today's video starts so you don't miss out on any updates and you're always the first to know when our newest videos go live. The definition of a civil war is a war between the citizens of the same country. We had one in the U.S. back in 1861, and it looks like another is brewing as we speak. The Battleground, Lucasfilm. The warring factions, Kathleen Kennedy versus John Favreau. The prize, Star Wars. It won't be bloody, but it will be vicious, and it will be anything but civil. The following is a world-class bullshitters exclusive. Over the last few months, there's been a major outpouring from fans calling for John Favreau to take over the reins of Lucasfilm after the massive success of The Mandalorian. To many, The Mandalorian was a return to form for Star Wars. Good story, good characters, good callbacks. It wasn't as on the nose as the sequel trilogy with its homages. Let's be honest, the sequel trilogy flat out ripped off so many classic moments from the original trilogy that it had to tell the audience that Crate wasn't a ripoff of Hoth. Salt. It, The Mandalorian, was a breath of fresh air. It invigorated the fan base, brought new hope to Star Wars, and a fresh direction for the franchise. But somebody's damn ego couldn't handle that, and now, Star Wars is stuck in another rut, and it's all because of this woman. You think I'm exaggerating? Think I'm placing the blame? Well, there's more to this story, and it comes from an alleged inside source. So take this with a grain of crate. Salt. But let's check out the story. Rumor, Civil War brewing inside Lucasfilm for control over Star Wars. A new rumor details there's an internal power struggle happening at Lucasfilm over control of Star Wars and the franchise's creative direction. The rumor comes from WDW Pro on the WDW Magic Forums. In a post titled, What to Watch Going into the Earnings Report dated Monday, May 4th, WDW Pro primarily discussed the Disney parks and the ideas that Disney has been tossing around on how they might be able to reopen amidst the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. However, WDW Pro also details an internal power struggle over the control of Star Wars at Lucasfilm. WDW Pro begins. The ongoing battle over Lucasfilm's direction continues with Kathleen Kennedy and John Favreau factions fighting over the studio. It's fairly well known at this point that the beef between Kennedy and Iger is real, given that Iger essentially ignored her in his memoirs. It's also hard to lose sight of how many projects Kathleen Kennedy has seen fail at Lucasfilm. Star Wars Resistance, Star Wars Forces of Destiny, Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures, Solo, and the sequel trilogy falling in revenue with each release. While Favreau seemingly struck it out of the park with The Mandalorian, a series for Disney Plus that even Iger was giving creative suggestions for and taking notes on each episode. Buried in the lead of Watee directing a new Star Wars film, which Kennedy has no creative control over, was confirmation of the female-centric Star Wars series being helmed by former Weinstein personal assistant Leslie Headland. But be ready, because it looks almost certain that a new narrative is being pushed by Kennedy loyalists in Lucasfilm. And that narrative is that Hedlund was only a personal assistant for one year, and that being against her or her series is misogynistic, mean, and unfair. Again, this is a conflict that Disney doesn't want. They don't want conflict over a hire that lavishly praised Weinstein, deleted hundreds of tweets at the same time as a leak about her project, and may no dirt on Eisner and Iger. With all that said, Kathleen Kennedy has essentially gotten her way time after time, outplaying Iger, even if she has been hammered by the segments of the fans, mostly by hiring and developing strong loyalty within her brand. What a load of crap. Kathleen Kennedy is a despot. If you're not aware of what that is, despotism is a form of government in which a single entity rules with absolute power. Normally, that entity is an individual, but societies which limit respect and power to specific groups have also been called despotic. Sound familiar? Sound like Cray Cray KK? Her desire to cater Star Wars to a demographic that doesn't like it is beyond belief. She has taken Star Wars down with her ideals, and now she's going to blow it up by employing someone who has worked for a trash individual and probably knows a lot of dirty little secrets. But hey, that doesn't matter. You make a girl power show at any cost. Kathleen Kennedy's ego has met critical mass. According to the WDW Pro Post, Kathleen Kennedy has been getting her way time and time again with Star Wars. How has that been beneficial for Star Wars? The only thing that has grown is Kathleen Kennedy's self-admiration. She's insulating herself from critics and reality. Kathleen Kennedy's Star Wars tenure has been the stuff of nightmares. The movies followed a steep decline at the box office, the merchandise became a staple of the dollar store, and fan goodwill evaporated. Last time, we covered the merchandise and how it sat on shelves for five straight years. Before that, we covered how the rise of Skywalker making a billion dollars still made it a disappointment. After watching this video, check those out, but before you do, ask yourselves this question. Outside of The Mandalorian, where has good Star Wars come from? Even the media has changed its tune. At first, anyone who spoke out against Disney Star Wars was a bigot, plain and simple. Now actors who work for Lucasfilm have voiced their criticism publicly. 
Just this past week, Sam Witwer spoke out and criticized Star Wars, saying, Star Wars Return of the Jedi was a much better finale than Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. After kicking off the sequel trilogy in 2015 with The Force Awakens to wrap up the Skywalker saga last year with the ninth and final episode from the franchise, the film was unfortunately met with a divisive response, with some saying it was a truncated and unsatisfying ending. As a self-confessed Star Wars fan who also happens to work for the animated side of things, most notably providing the voice of Darth Maul and the Emperor in Star Wars The Clone Wars and Rebels, Whitworth shared his two cents about the rise of Skywalker, which he unfortunately didn't really like. It's, um, look, if you like it, awesome. It's not as meaningful to me because I can't really reconcile that mythology with George's. But that's just my opinion, you know? My personal take is, I think a Star Wars where the moral of the story is throw down your weapon, you don't hurt your family, love, or fear. I think that's superior than the Star Wars where you win by melting the bad guy's face off. That's just my thing. I just don't know how you can do a better ending than Return of the Jedi. Whitworth's new comments come after he aired grievances over Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi. According to him, it didn't seem like the filmmaker who also wrote the movie didn't do his homework with regards to the lore and core principles of Star Wars. While he did say he found many compelling elements in the story, for him, it just didn't fit the themes that the iconic sci-fi franchise is known for. He particularly cited having problems with Luke Skywalker, not rushing to his sister's side when she called to him. Yes, this is a man voicing his opinion, but it's also a man connected to Lucasfilm that isn't afraid to speak his mind, and that's refreshing. That change gives me hopes for other outlets to stop making excuses for bad Star Wars. And the person responsible for the bad Star Wars is Kathleen Kennedy. You have to ask yourself, is Disney blind? Are they oblivious? The obvious answer is no. They're well aware of the criticism that their Star Wars films face. They're well aware of the declining box office, and they're well aware of the inflated budgets for each film. If we can, let's just jump back to the WDW post for a moment and look at the list of Star Wars failures from Kathleen Kennedy. So they list Star Wars Resistance, Star Wars Forces of Destiny, Star Wars Galaxy of Adventure, Solo, and the sequel trilogy. Hmm. Interesting. Resistance was a joke from the minute it launched. Anytime someone criticized it, we were told to shut up, it's for kids. That's a common argument we hear a lot these days, and it sucks now just as much as it sucked then. I think it fails because it was on at 10pm on Sunday nights. And what part of their target demographic is awake? Whenever I brought that up, people said DVR will save the show. It didn't. Then there were Star Wars Forces of Destiny, or as I like to call it, Forces of Diversity. And that line was a whopper of a failure. A big, fat failure. Then there was Star Wars Galaxy of Adventure, which was supposed to entice a new audience and sell toys. That's not doing either. Solo? <laughs> well, Solo lost money. And finally, the sequel trilogy, which we covered extensively here last time. So if you want a detailed box office breakdown on how a billion dollar film was a failure, click the link. You'd think that after such an impressive resume of trash, the higher-ups at Disney would give old KK the boot and move on to someone who isn't as entrenched in feminist political rhetoric and bad content. They haven't. Are they afraid of Kathleen Kennedy? Does she have some mystical powers? No, unless you count dirt and connections as mystical. And I do. That's why KK should have played the Ancient One in Doctor Strange. There are all sorts of rumors and speculation as to how Kathleen Kennedy kept her job. Hell, she even got an extension back in 2018. But all I know is that the job she's done with Star Wars is downright despicable. On the other side of that coin is Jon Favreau, the man who brought us The Mandalorian, the show that saved Star Wars. During the build-up to the rise of Skywalker, the talk wasn't about the closing of the Skywalker saga, it was about Baby Yoda. That little green frog eater captured everyone's attention, while Rey, the feminist icon, was busy melting faces and stealing identities. She's like Leonardo DiCaprio in Catch Me If You Can, except not. The Mandalorian brought together Star Wars fans from all generations, unlike the sequel trilogy, which pushed them away. That was always something that Star Wars had going in its favor, its cross-generational appeal. Disney Star Wars has made it very clear that we don't want the old guys, we want fresh blood. Well, fresh blood wants Marvel, Fortnite, PUBG, TMNT, WWE, and the DDO JSIOC. That last one is for real fans. Star Wars fans followed what Disney wanted and left. But John Favreau's show was just too good to keep us away. It was fun, funny, visually stunning, action-packed, and most importantly, good. It really brought a lot of goodwill back to Star Wars. Though sadly for old KK, that goodwill didn't translate to a big win for The Rise of Skywalker. With season 2 in the works, the possibility of Boba Fett popping up, and a slew of new merchandise just aching to be bought, this time with actual demand, Favreau's stock is rising in the company. Star Wars needs to move forward to justify the $4 billion price tag. I know a lot of people tell you that Disney made their money back so many times over, but when The Rise of Skywalker grosses a billion dollars, but its profits are just $386 million, things start to make a little more sense. The behind-the-scenes power struggle only hurts Star Wars and its fans. Modern Star Wars is full of Raylo fanfic, feminist first edicts, and bad, no, terrible filmmaking choices to subvert your expectations. And all those terrible things are the fault of Kathleen Kennedy. Alright, I don't know about the fanfic, but I've heard that she writes under the screen name Raylo Bot 69 kk but I could be wrong. That's just a rumor. 
It would be nice if Kathleen Kennedy would just step aside and let Jon Favreau do his thing. I don't think any Star Wars fan would object to more Star Wars series, or even a film created in the vein of The Mandalorian. Then again, maybe what Star Wars needs is just a break. A well-deserved break. So folks, what do you think about the internal struggles at Lucasfilm, this civil war, if you will, these warring factions inside the company? It makes for great drama, it makes for great speculation, but it doesn't make for great Star Wars. Because for every fun, good thing like The Mandalorian, you do get a rise of Skywalker, and they almost cancel each other out. One good, one bad, hmm, it's nothing. And with this new news of Boba Fett appearing in The Mandalorian Season 2, I don't know if the show's gonna be able to uh, keep it going, keep the momentum as strong as it was. Is it gonna fall into the trap of the sequel trilogy? Will it become Episode 7, where it's like, hey, remember this guy and remember that guy? Well, we're gonna do it on TV now. And that was the beauty of The Mandalorian. It didn't fall into that trap. It didn't require the member berries as strong. Oh, you saw Jabba the Hutt's droid that opened the door? That's a cool callback. Not many people caught that one. Oh, an IG unit. Oh, I remember IG-88 from The Empire Strikes Back. Well, this is IG-11. He's cooler and deadlier. Cool, and that's all the callback it was. Or we went back to Tatooine or saw a Jawa on another planet. Little things like that, but not, hey, I'm Han Solo, I'm here to fight this good battle. I think Boba Fett's a little just too on the nose, but... In the interest of fairness, I guess I have to wait. And I will, till the end of this year. So folks, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. Our last two videos have reached a lot of people, so we have a lot of new people in the audience, so I'd like to say thank you and welcome to the channel. Hope you like what you uh, have heard today. If you want more, there's a ton in the archive. We're getting close to our thousandth video, so that's gonna be exciting. And we're getting close to our 160,000th subscribers, so if all goes to plan, this week on the podcast, we'll be celebrating it. If not, we'll celebrate it next week. But either way, we're celebrating. And if that's not enough content for you, well, we're over on Patreon. If you really wanna help our channel grow, check us out over there. A buck a month helps, but five bucks, which is only 17 cents a day, gets you access to all kinds of exclusive digital content, bonus podcasts, a wrestling show, and anything else you guys want, you can just request over there. So I'm gonna head out for today, folks. I'll be back next time with another video. I got a nice little short one about some Star Wars merchandise that they just can't give away yet. <coughs> Rose Tico. And um, then we're on to a bigger one this week. So make sure you guys have your bell notifications turned on and check your inboxes every day for world-class bullshitters content. I'll be back next time with more, but while I'm away, do the one thing I always ask. Go out into the world and be excellent to each other.